Talk about one of life's biggest questions. It seems the Xbox PlayStation argument has gone on for years, with arguments for and against both sides. Over the course of today's video, I'll be talking about the pros and cons of both, and ultimately letting you guys decide which console you should buy. At the end of the day, I could make this video opinion based, but I'll do my very best to be as unbiased as possible, although that may be hard because the Xbox is clearly the superior console. All joking aside guys, as someone who was fortunate enough to grow up with both previous generation consoles, I have first hand experience with both. But still, just because I don't like something doesn't necessarily mean that would be the case for you, the person watching this video. Either way, today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking should we buy the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X? How's it going, guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one again, Jared Bronstein. And if you can't tell by now, I'm clearly Team Xbox. That being said, I definitely have an appreciation for the PlayStation, and considering how most of my friends, colleagues, and even followers have shown their allegiance to PlayStation, I'm not sure I'll ever cave. As always, stick around to the very end for some comment replies and let us know your thoughts in the comments down below as well as what other videos you would like to see on our channel. Before we jump into this one, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Top 10 Central, easily the best reaction channel on YouTube. You can quote me on that one, guys, and it's because I'm in the videos. On a more serious note, or should I say lighthearted, check out Top 10 Central, guys. Our slogan is literally come laugh with us, and that's what we hope you guys will do. It's a really fun channel, so after you guys get heated and shirt me in the comments below for being pro Xbox, head over to Top 10 Central for a laugh because you're gonna need it. All right guys, let's get into this one. Now, as I previously mentioned guys, this isn't really a question I could answer for you. There are so many variables when comparing the two consoles, which we still don't know everything about. That makes this question even tougher, because for example, if you want the console with more processing power, then the Xbox is the go-to. With a seven nanometer processing chip, this thing is gonna run as smooth as butter on a hot stove. In comparison, well, the PlayStation hasn't released that specific detail just yet. So considering how I have no idea what the PS5 is going to be using, of course, I can say at this moment, the Xbox will be more powerful because it's not being compared to anything. However, as you can imagine, a lot of the specs are similar, including the fact that they both have SSD, which is expected to significantly reduce loading times and increase gameplay. But the Xbox is going to have a one terabyte SSD, while the PS5 is going to have an 825 gigabyte SSD. Yeah, they both still have a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive and the capability to run 4K at 60 FPS, up to 120 FPS and 8K. At the end of the day, would the average gamer know the difference between any of what I just said? Most likely not. Although some are very into the specs and capabilities of the console, which many should be, the average gamer, myself included, doesn't seem to care too much about specs, like gigabytes and RAM, for example. That comment may upset a lot of you, but the reality is our eyes have a pretty damn hard time processing 8K, for example. It's all just a marketing ploy, so when looking at specs, unless you truly have an understanding of them, in comparison, the Xbox and PlayStation are going to be more or less the same across the board. As previously mentioned, PlayStation has held back on some details, but for the most part, it seems these two are neck and neck, although some think the Xbox is slightly better. And this is specifically when compared on paper. As we know, just because something appears to be better on paper doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be superior. Especially when talking about consoles, we gotta let the gameplay do the talking. Of course, there's the physical appearance of the console, with the Xbox being compared to a mini fridge, and the PS5 clearly being a hybrid of the Wii and Batman. For things like space, you may want a more sleek looking, less boxy console, which would lead to you purchasing the PS5. But it seems one of the biggest factors when comparing the consoles really comes down to one thing. Game exclusivity. I mean, it really comes down to one question. Do you like Spider-Man? Now, it's no secret that's usually the argument those in the PlayStation camp use to taunt Xbox users who do not have a Spider-Man game on their console. But that may actually change with the new Xbox. We'll get back to that a little bit later. As of now, it's been confirmed that Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Forbidden West, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and of course, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, are among the many PlayStation 5 exclusive titles. Xbox, on the other hand, have released a ton of games that will run on their console, as well as previous generation consoles, with a handful also being available to PlayStation users. When it comes to exclusivity, PlayStation has been known to be the superior console. But again, depends on what kind of games you play. Xbox's real claim to fame on this one would be Halo. And to no surprise, with all the talk of Spider-Man, it's been confirmed that Xbox will be releasing Halo 6, which is going to be a follow-up from the last Halo game which came out in 2015. I know they have Halo Wars 2, but no one played that, guys. Come on. PlayStation also has God of War 5 coming at some point, but no one is really sure when. There's been rumors of 2022, but I can't confirm nor deny that, as they are simply rumors. Another interesting feature here is the backwards compatibility. Although both consoles have said they are going to have the feature, once again, Xbox has been much more vocal and has revealed a lot more of what's to come. With the ability to play almost every Xbox One game, hundreds of Xbox 360 games, and even a few original Xbox games, it seems if you grew up playing on Xbox, odds are you won't be going over to Team PlayStation anytime soon, 
assuming you already have a ton of Xbox games. And it's not like you're playing these games on your new console in Xbox 360 graphics. Apparently the Xbox Series X will be able to run your older games at a higher resolution than they could on previous consoles. The official Xbox site had a blog post written by Jason Ronald, the director of program management for the Xbox Series X, which read, I quote, with more than 100,000 hours of play testing already completed, thousands of games are already playable on Xbox Series X today, from the biggest blockbusters to cult classics and fan favorites. Many of us in Team Xbox play on the Xbox Series X daily as our primary console, and switching between generations is seamless. By the time we launch this holiday, the team will have spent well over 200,000 hours ensuring your game library is ready for you to jump in immediately. Now technically speaking here guys, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was available for Xbox 360. Could that mean Xbox players will have a Spider-Man game to play even if it's incredibly outdated? Who knows? The PlayStation 5 is also going to be capable of backwards compatibility, with Sony writing in a PlayStation blog, I quote, We believe that the overwhelming majority of the 4,000 plus PS4 titles will be playable on PS5. We have already tested hundreds of titles and are preparing to test thousands more as we move towards launch. Much like the Xbox, these backwards compatible games are also expected to be in a higher resolution, giving gamers a more enjoyable playing experience. However, it's unclear if previous console games, such as the original PlayStation, as well as the PS2 and 3, are also going to be compatible. Yet another deciding factor, aside from the gameplay and the console itself, is accessories and price. More specifically, Xbox has already said that its accessories, such as headsets and pads, are going to be backwards compatible, at least with their most recent console. The new Xbox controller is relatively the same, although they are going to be adding another share button and in their own words, make it more accessible. Little redesigns such as little tactile bumps on the triggers and handles are being added to help gameplay, as well as a redesigned D-pad. PlayStation, on the other hand, are completely revamping their controllers. Don't have a headset? No problem. You can use the controller to speak to your friends. And if you have a headset, fear not, as a headphone jack has been confirmed, something people were worried about when the controller was first revealed. In fact, although it's cool you could talk to your friends with your controller when playing certain games such as Call of Duty or any player versus player where hearing things like footsteps are important, you'd likely want a headset. The PlayStation 5 is going to set a new gold standard when it comes to play audio, and according to Tech Radar, I quote, Sony is delivering this audio through the the Tempest engine, which can handle hundreds of sound sources for a more realistic audio environment. The controller itself has also been redesigned. Aside from the two color tone, when comparing the PS5 controller to the PS4, it seems the predecessor was smaller, and the PS5 controller looks more like an Xbox controller than anything. But it's going to feature a create button, haptic feedback, and adaptive triggers, as well as a USB-C port, which will likely see the controller charge at an incredibly fast rate. Sony Interactive Entertainment President Jim Ryan said in a blog post, I quote, DualSense marks a radical departure from our previous controller offerings and captures just how strongly we feel about making a generational leap with PS5. The new controller, along with many innovative features in PS5, will be transformative for games. Continuing our mission at PlayStation to push the boundaries of play, now and in the future. Now speaking on price, it depends which console we're talking about, as there could be up to four. PlayStation is going to be dropping both a disc and digital only version of the upcoming next gen console. Called the PS5 Digital Edition, as you can imagine, it won't take discs. And although PlayStation has yet to officially reveal their price point, many think the Digital Edition will come in anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks cheaper than the PS5. As of now, it's been rumored that the price tag may start around 499 USD. As you can imagine, the same thing has been said for the Xbox Series X console, but it depends which one we're talking about. Although nothing has been confirmed, many are speculating that Xbox will also release a cheaper option of their new console, which is currently being called the Xbox Series S, or Lockhart. Again, for the Lockhart, if it does even come to fruition, people believe it could be up to 100 bucks cheaper. And considering how both the Xbox One and One X debuted with a price tag of 499 USD, don't be surprised if their next generation console follows suit. Now before I wrap up this one, I want to mention there's also factors like power. The Xbox Series X is apparently going to use twice as much electricity as the Xbox One. If you're an environmentalist or just want to keep your bill down, then maybe the PS5 is for you. Maybe user interface is a deciding factor for you, and we all know the PlayStation has been the far superior console there. Even with Xbox constantly changing their UI, it seems PlayStation may always take the cake in that category. But what about subscriptions? Again, it depends on what games you play and what you like. Xbox Game Pass has been argued to be the better of the two when comparing it to PlayStation Pass. Although PlayStation has more than double the amount of games available, Xbox users seem to get more value as new exclusive games launch directly into the subscription and it's available in more countries. There's also Project X Cloud, which is Microsoft's new rumored streaming service that will allow users to stream to mobile and tablet devices, whereas PlayStation allows you to stream on PS4 and computers with PS Now. 
but again, why would you want to stream on a tablet if you got a 50 inch TV? Now guys, as I previously mentioned, there are so many variables when comparing the two. What games you play, what console you grew up with, price points, and even things like interfaces can ultimately lead you to decide which one you should buy. I didn't even mention friends. A lot of my friends have PlayStations actually, but my boys in Texas, Dwayne and Ricky, who I've been playing with for almost 10 years, have Xbox. And for them, I'll never switch. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one, guys. Are you Team Xbox or Team PlayStation? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, let's pull out some comments from the video. What if we defund the police? Robert Connor said, no, don't get rid of the police. There'd be chaos. This is a very loaded question. I think some people think defund the police means to abolish them altogether, and other people think it means just take some money away and put them into other areas that the government appears to be lacking when it comes to, I guess, spreading the wealth. So. That's all I'll say there, guys. <laughs> Richie Games said that I'm moving to Canada. Uh, might be hard. There's a pandemic right now. I don't know when the borders are going to open, let alone they'll allow, you know, people to officially become citizens of Canada. But uh, you could try. Let me know. Maybe like vlog it, put it on YouTube. Chetnet5 said defunding the police would lead to the National Guard taking over. People don't think about that, do they? I actually never thought about that because I see everyone talking about like if you get rid of the police, crime's gonna spike. At the end of the day, if something's illegal, it's illegal. So like if someone's breaking the law and the police aren't there, there's gonna be someone to stop them. And if it's the National Guard, well, I well we could see we see what they're capable of. But that's an interesting point. If the National Guard kind of acted like the new cops, is that really gonna help anything? Who knows? Only time will tell. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. I really hope you guys don't hate me because I'm Team Xbox. And if you do. Well, that's your problem. If you made it this far in the video, though, feel free to add me on Xbox. My gamer tag is Bronstein7, my last name and the number seven. Shoot me a message and I'll play with you guys. I play Warzone all the time, so let's hit it up.